Today we have a booming topic. We're going to hit it hard. We're going to give you some serious info. Um, we're going to talk, talk about how do you settle a dispute in the barbershop? How do you handle a disgruntled client? What are some of the steps that you can take to de-escalate the situation? How you can get back to, to normalcy? Because if your day goes terrible, it affects the whole shop. We're going to talk about that. Give some good insight. My special guest in tow, my co-host, I'm going to let him introduce himself, and then we're going to go shoot into the, the guest speakers. They are quiet right now, but they're going to come with some pain. <laughs> These brothers love to talk. I think one of them got an energizer battery in his back. <laughs> He's never stopped talking. <laughs> but let's go. We'll go. Shoot, my brother. <laughs> am, go. I, am I your barber? <laughs> Happy to be back on the show. Back again. Again. Two guests. Yo, this is AJ. <laughs> that very white My. voice. <laughs> Here you go. Hey, the ladies love it. The ladies love it. Hey, hey. My name is AJ. Let's stay on topic. Crown Academy of Bristol, representing the house. My brother, Craig Charles, is my homie from way back. <laughs> so I'm here today as a guest. Hopefully I can come on the show a lot more and see y'all, talk to y'all wonderful peoples. Oh, yeah, give some insight. Your insight is on the album, Mr. A. Hey, Jay. Now we got, now we got let King that, Mike. Let, let that man introduce himself. That's what he's here. Yeah, this is Mike oh. King K, man, aka ATO the Barber. You know, we trying to stay fresh up in here. You already know what it is. <laughs> yes. And for all the guests, if you have any questions that you would like to, like us to answer firsthand, just shoot us a comment, question, concerns, and we'll get you. Again, thanks for my man Lathan over here. He's taking care of us for the past. How many episodes? I we're close to fifty right now. So Market Street Media, shout out again um, to our other sponsor, Colossal Brand, going live again. Check him out. Jay's doing some great things with his apparel. So let's jump into this banging topic. So when you guys hear about workplace drama or any type of anything that's gonna make it on easier for for clients for workers, for customers, for staff, whatever it may be. I think this topic right here could range so many different ways and it can cover so many different jobs, so many different workforce, work field, any type of things that you do. How do you settle disputes? When you hear about settling disputes, it's going to happen. What do, you, what do you think about, Mike? Well, in general, I'm just trying to handle disputes between, like, who are you speaking of? Um, people come into the to the shop. That's so we we keeping it because it's so broad, but we keep it in the barbershop. Just customers in general. Customers in general. Okay. Well, I mean, I try to pull them off to the side. And... We we gonna we gonna give that info, but I said when you think about it, when you hear that coming, what do you what, what comes to your mind? Oh, I mean, just maybe a bad cut or something like that. All right. You know, they just upset. They didn't like the way it turned out or something like that. So, sometimes people just come in with something that's preconceived before bad cut but we'll talk about that right or they got a bad day at work and coming in and they just are unhappy period right you know what i'm saying so it could be a lot of things you know that's why i always try to lighten the mood with my client I try to crack a smile lighten a person person's day you know enjoy their time while they're with me in my chair right that's so but if they come in with a bad attitude already they're gonna they're gonna say oh my cut's bad maybe and maybe in particularly, maybe that client's been with two or three different barbers in the shop, and they ain't never happy. So they just might be that type of person. That's true. So you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it could be anything. Bad day at work. Wife didn't cook dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think about I think about not just like, not just the client side. The client side, I think, is the easiest part. I think the hardest part is like your coworkers, the people you're sometimes. It, and if, 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 if two of y'all ain't jiving, the, the whole shop feels it. The whole shop, the right. whole Thanks. building. Mm -hmm. Right, and, mm -hmm. and that's what we're going to talk about. Like I said, it's, it's such a broad topic, so we're going to talk about handling disputes with clients, customers coming in, um, handling disputes with with staff, with, with your coworker. All those things are important to make the day go go well because what end up happening, you could affect your reputation. Mm -hmm. Real fast. Your income. Whew. 
<laughs> that's a big that, that should be your first one your income yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's the first thing you worried and, about and, and, and the vibe of the shop yeah yeah you got to work with these people every day you can't come in with i mean to me you provide a service not just to your client but with the other barbers too because y'all gonna have to mesh you, you do you know what i'm saying but so some people don't know how to handle those situations and what end up happening is you might lose a client in a case where it is a customer or if it's a coworker, where they might feel uncomfortable coming back to work taking some days off where you're going to lose some money and that shouldn't so i feel as a student in barber school because this is called barber college success we have to start off on the right foot know how to handle certain situations how to make the environment best for ourselves, our client, and the shop. Those things are critical because that's the place that's going to feed you. I, and and I, I think I've, everybody that if you've cut hair for long enough have been in every situation. You know, sometimes, sometimes you got fire clients. Sometimes you got to tell a client, "Listen, man, I ain't the, this. You know, I've, I've talked to you. We try to work it out, and I just might not be the one for you. That might you, you might have to try somebody else out. You know, so, or or just." And if you're not a controversial person, uh, finding ways to, to deal with situations that that might not be easy for you. And that's a, I think that's one thing when people don't realize they come into the, the industry of dealing with people that sometimes you'll have to handle <laughs> confrontation. Right. And, and and people handle that different ways. So. Right. I mean, hey, you're right about that. I, I would just ask them, hey, maybe it's not a right for me. And you. I mean, that's the only thing you can do, really. But when do when when do you uh when do you how how long of a lease should a person get? How long do you think they should? Enter? I mean, if I've cut their hair three times and they don't like my lips by then, or even if they do sit in my chair again, you know, because a lot of times the client ain't gonna say nothing to you. They just not gonna come back to you. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it, it all depends on the client, or you know, hey, uh, if I mess up on your hair, just don't worry about it this time, you know, and let me try again next time. Yes. You know, to see if we can't come to a common ground and I can satisfy your needs and stuff like that, you know? So, I mean, that's the way I would do it. But if they're really, really unruly and want to upset the shop and the other customers and the other barbers in there, you know, hey, look, man, hey, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to ask you to leave. So the most important part of the heck, and you guys know, <clears throat> is the consultation. Right. The consultation is so critical. It is, is it's, I can't put the importance of a consultation on a haircut. Because you're going through the consultation. Yeah, that's you. You can drink that. What's your tonsils real quick, Mike? <laughs> hey, man, I got to check real quick. <laughs> so the consultation is so important because you can feel the temperature of the client. You can feel the temperature, how they walk into the situation. And it gives you opportunity to see the haircut and see what's going on through a typical, simple conversation. That is so important. And that's why... I think starting out, when you're a student, when the client comes in, you should go out there to greet the client. Greet them with a smile. That's number one. Always. Greet them with a smile and say, hey, my name is such and such. What is your name? And then you start from there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't just have them just come straight into the business and establishment and just sit down <clears throat> in the chair without having that dialogue from the door to the chair. Yeah, yeah. you got to acknowledge them, man, because if you don't, they, they don't feel comfortable right off the rip. That, that's so important. And even... It's kind of breaking the ice, too. It is. But you, you think that's so simple, but a lot of people forget those things. Even as far as, like, going into the shop and someone walks into the shop and then you sit in your chair and you have your headphones on. You can't build no relationship. You can't have a proper consultation with someone if you're distracted. Mm-hmm. That's even if it's not your client. Even if it's not your client. Even if it's somebody else's client. Because one day so and so might be out and you're gonna have to step it up. You're gonna have to show out for your for your, you know, he, he might need a wedding haircut or something important then. Right, <laughs> right, right. And if you didn't speak to him, then they're just gonna be upset. I'm like, I ain't going to him. He yeah. just looked at me and kept going what he was doing. One practice that we used and I use for students a lot. I often engage with the, the client and the student at the same time, just to kind of build the bond a little closer. The student introduced himself. He said, hey, how you doing? My name is such and such. And I said, hey, sir, how you doing? Thank you. you um, you're going to one of our best students. Just reassuring, giving the client some more confidence. <clears throat> After I give him that confidence, it's up to you. Right. right. You got to take the ball and run with it. Right? Yes. For and, sure. You know, you can't, you can't come up half step. We trying to do a Hail Mary. 
And then it's also important too sometimes to give students confidence while they're cutting hair. Hey, man, just walking by, that haircut's look good. Mm -hmm. You're doing a great job. Mm -hmm. A subtle little remark. Those things help reassure the client and it reassures the students as well, confidence. And yeah. when they leave too, also try to compliment them on the haircut. Of course. And so when they walk out the door, they walk out the door with that 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 feeling that they've, they've done something, they've bettered themselves that day. And those habits will take you on into the shop too. When someone comes in, he might come for Asia, he might come for you and I'm saying, hey, how you doing, sir? Thank you, welcome for coming in the Crown Cuts. And that just gives the client a little bit more reassurance. Mm -hmm. And then AJ will do his rest. But as other barbers working with you, <laughs> you know that other barbers working with you, you just <laughs> hey, thank you for coming in and helping us out. We really appreciate you stopping through. AJ got you. You're in good hands like all state. Uh, I know you just didn't steal my line, Greg. Yeah, I guy, know you just didn't steal guy, my line. This guy right here. I no know line. you just didn't steal my line. Right, you know AJ. Hey, man. You know AJ. <laughs> you you will maybe come across the table, Craig. <laughs> we about to handle this dispute real quick. <laughs> this guy right here. Conversation, conversation wise. <laughs> no <laughs> furniture moving. <laughs> furniture moving. This guy right here. We talking about Lathan. Seven. Hey, I'm sorry. What's about to happen? <laughs> How do you still? How's that Allstate slogan? And in, in it, but it's your line. Hey man, me and all got some copyright problems. Anyways. Me, me, me and all state got an understanding. <laughs> hey, I'm like, what's that dude off of uh, State Farm? What's that dude's name? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Oh, God, uh, let, let, let's stay on track. All we can, right, we can right, jump right, off right. of this and, and we can get we can get to something that we only need to get into. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Go ahead. But as we were saying, just that reassurance, because we're gonna roll play here in a minute, and we're gonna talk about it. How do we handle this situation? What's the best way fit? And I'll throw a couple scenarios out there and I'll let you guys handle it. But I think it's important, again, just that reassurance. I have people working in the shop or you have 15 students at school that day, a client come in. I don't see it as a problem if everyone says hello to the client. I say, how you doing today? Thanks for coming in. Those things just add reassurance because when you that, it lessens a lot of the problems that could come later. Are you talking about like while they're in the chair? I say, how are you doing today? The whole time. The whole time. Yeah, when they walk in. Well, I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to come in between the barber and the client that's doing the, the, the service because I think that's throwing the barber off. Depending on how comfortable the barber is with you coming up there and talking to that client, you know what I'm saying? Well, well. I mean, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not a, a simple. Hey, how you doing? Is not really gonna mess up his. But if that's messing up that dude's vibe, he low too. He shouldn't be cutting hair, right? Right. Now. But the way I feel is like you walk into a shop and they're sitting there in their chair and they on their phones and they just look up, don't even say nothing. You like, oh, I don't even want to be in here. Right. You know, yeah. it's like just a simple. You know, hey, how you doing? You know, somebody will be with you in a moment. Right. And and that's it. And people just want to be acknowledged. Right. That's it's all. not. It's not having a whole ten minute conversation with someone else's client or one in the chair. With an individual barber, you're saying, "Hey, how you doing today?" I've seen people. <clears throat> I've seen people, and this is by accident. You know, we weren't trying to be rude, but I've seen people that's walked in and nobody say nothing to them and just and walk right out. And walk right out. It's exactly. happened a couple of times, and it wasn't because you know none of us. I mean, we might have been so focused on that. It wasn't just like we didn't like the dude. It was just like we, you know, we were busy and focused on something else. But then, at, and, and honestly, after the last time that happened, I mean, I've made a point to say hello to everyone that comes in the door because I don't want to see people. Because that just builds a bad reputation without even a, a haircut, without even a haircut, just walking in there. Somebody could not, you could not say hello to them, say, don't like the vibe and leave. Exactly. One, one of the key things you see on review that people leave, they'll always say, um, the environment was friendly, mm -hmm. the staff was friendly and nice. Yeah. They didn't say the individual was really nice. If it's a group of people working, they say <laughs> the staff was friendly Facts. and the environment was nice. Facts. So, and so that's what you're trying to create. That's what you're trying to create. You're trying to create a friendly, welcoming, mm -hmm. nice environment. Mm -hmm. Because whether you like it or not, wherever you're at cutting hair, that the reputation of that place is going to be your reputation. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you're responsible. Mm -hmm. And even if it's just in the school at the time, they say, "Oh, go up there," because that brings more content and that gives y'all more repetitions. That get you know that brings more, you know, can bring more uh, resources to the school to provide more services. And, nice. and you gotta you gotta put the you gotta act. And that's how I thought when I first started cutting hair. It was like I gotta put the barbershop on my back. Like I, no matter what, I'm gonna be here on time. I'm gonna have a good reputation. 
And and that's how I think like it goes well for everybody. Exactly. And mm-hmm. most of all, have fun. Yeah. <laughs> have fun. Yeah. I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't love it. Thanks. So now so someone <clears throat> comes in. Let's get to a, a, a situation. Someone comes in, Mike, and they're just balls to the wall. Angry. <laughs> And the haircut is finished. And they just balls to the wall, anger, and just rowling up and, you know, seeing their nose snarling up like some people, like, you know, you got snot coming out their nose. I mean, I'm asking them what's going on, you know, try to have a conversation with them, trying to see if I can make their day better. If not, you know, pull them off to the side, man, be like, you know, anything I can help you with. You know, if they still angry about that, it's like, man, then you know what? Don't even worry about the cut, man. Cut's on me. You know, I just hope your day gets better. And keep it that simple. Yeah. What about what, what are you thinking of, man? I think that's that's the same. That's all you can do. I mean, at the end of the day, nobody's perfect, you know. And then you have the internet with the with the uh, photoshopping, you know. They got the enhancements, so clients have unreal expectations for haircuts. Facts. And as and I wish I had it. There's this blonde blonde hair, blue eyed boy. I seen more pictures of him than I seen of my own son. And then women bring him in, like make my kids hair look. And I'm like, ma'am, we can only do. He did, you know, he he doesn't he don't have got yeah. that same. Kind of hair. He don't have Lamelo Ball's hair, man. <laughs> yeah. Like even if he gets a perm, not gonna be <laughs> not even the color of hair, but yeah. the texture of hair. But the, the complexion of skin affects the haircut too, for sure. Thanks. So you can't just think you, you dark as me and said you want uh, a Lamelo Ball haircut. Exactly. Oh, you want? I mean, I've had it several times where this guy came. It's gonna look like, like a Jerry curl. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he wanted to look like Will Smith. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like he ran me a Will Smith picture but your head is what there's a dude that, yeah. there's a dude that came in and he was going bald and his wife gave him a picture of thor and sent him in there with the picture of thor and said hey, can you make my hair look like this and uh that was rough I, it was a hard conversation <laughs> but then sometimes you gotta have those you gotta you gotta be realistic with your clients bro, bro you ain't got no hair i'm just saying <laughs> i mean yeah you have to tell clients when to let it go when they have that um the you around the top of the head <laughs> sometimes you need to let it go <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But I mean, I think it's a serious situation because a lot of times people don't know how to handle scenarios like that. And one key thing you brought up, Mike, is take him away from the situation. Yes, yes, always, always. <laughs> At least off to the side, you know, behind, you know, maybe in the office or something, or outside the door, you know. Right. But don't leave it in the shot where everybody's getting distracted by people turning and yep. looking at it, and like it's a, it creates a whole nother thing because then they think you're calling them out in front of everybody. Try what, to get them in a private place. What 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 other things do you suggest that we can do? Am I, AJ? I mean, you know, me. I might ask them to cry on my shoulder or something. You know. <laughs> I yeah. mean, but you, something. But think about it. Not being funny, but someone might take that offensive. Yeah, you. That right. you're mocking the situation. Yeah, I mean, and you know, I, I, when I, when I, someone I, takes something offensive, like you mocking the situation, they can go to ten quick, quicker. I'm always like, like. Go happy, lucky, you know. I give off that vibe, that warm feeling, you know. But if I see that, I'm I'm be like, pull them up to the side and you know, ask them how their day's doing. You know, if they're a client of mine and and being real faithful, you know, what's what's a free haircut that can make somebody's day go from one to a thousand? You know what I'm saying? And that consultation between you and your client and and vibing back and forth and talking about whatever's going on you know i've heard you say this plenty of times a barber wears many hats of course okay mm-hmm. you you know what i'm saying so but there's sometimes even when you're happy go even if you you do something that you you don't intend for it to happen or the right. way that they that you say something comes across is rude to some people and if they don't know you especially first time clientele yes so i mean and, and there's been situations where sarcasm said, is not the the right time in yeah. certain situations a lot of times especially the first time client no, or I'm, even, or even someone time. who you know sometimes, because it could really be going through something at that time where sarcasm is not the ideal thing. So a lot of times people just aren't on the same wavelength that you're on. And you just got to, you know, if somebody you know, then okay, good. But, you know, somebody that you're dealing with, you got to try to be, yeah, I say be empathetic, not sympathetic. You know what I'm right. saying? So, situation. And, then if, and if you see someone, voice is getting louder in a situation, and like we just discussed, pull them to the side. But the key thing is you never meet them with their pitch. If their right. pitch is higher than yours, you should never go above their pitch. 
You should, go ahead. My favorite. I, I like when I think about dealing with uh, customers. Uh, I always think about Roadhouse. You ever seen him with Patrick Swayze? Roadhouse. Mm -hmm. It's anyways, and he's he's a bad dude, and he tells him he's like, "What do you do if somebody swings?" He said, "Be nice." He said, "What if they swing at you? Be nice." He said, well, what, what if it, it, you be nice until it's time to not be nice? So always, no matter what's happening, try to, to take the high road. We go high. Try to de-escalate <laughs> the situation. Because right. we own a business. It's our reputation. So because at the end of the day, you always want to try to go higher. Because nine out of ten times, if someone voices real high, if you drop your pitch ten times below theirs, where they have to ask you, would you what did you say? They'll drop their voice. Especially if they know they're embarrassing themselves. Yeah. yeah, and and you just drop your tone and be real calm and mellow. You drop your tone, they'll drop theirs. Agreed. But if you go on toe for toe with them and trying to, you you've made this situation uncomfortable. Worse than what it should have been. Worse than what it should have been, and then you have a problem now. Houston, we have a problem. So there's strategic ways to handle situations. What else? What what other ways would you handle? The, partic oh. the particular situation, just like with an angry person. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's also a time where, I mean, I, you should always try to take the high road, but at, at, at some point in time, you know, if, if people continue to escalate, you need to remind them that they do not have to get their hair cut here. And, then it, and it gets to that. It's sometimes it's, get, it's gotten to that point with me before, and I had a conversation. Like, Listen, if you don't like what I'm doing, you know, I appreciate you coming here, but if you're going to act like this, then there's no point in you coming back because I can't make you happy. I can't service you. Thanks. And, then, and and that's a great way to handle things. And that, and, but at the same time, man, that's a heartbreaking conversation to, to have with someone. It's you business. Know? You know, and, and you I know, to, you I know, to the I, side, I know it's business. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a difficult situation at times yeah. if you have that situation and that conversation in a crowd with everybody watching um, <clears throat> and someone who could probably potentially throw gas on it. So that's why it's essential to pull them to the side. Facts, and then also you don't want to seem like other other people in the shop looking at you like you weak or something like that too, because you know some people got that got that feeling too. It's like, oh, he just gonna let him punk him out like that, and right? Like, so you avoid all those scenarios, all those situations where you bring someone, where you can lower the, the tone of the conversation, where you could offer them a gift certificate, offer them a free haircut, offer them something, or even a, a gift certificate to a restaurant or something, 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 something just mild. Just to kind of dilute the situation. Right. As far as we go on, it's like, man, you can get this free cut or you can get out. Right. Man, but then but, but then you could also be like I ain't feeding you too. <laughs> but, but you can Facts. also but you can also you can also like you said, hey man, I've 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 tried my best for you and I don't think I can service you. If if, if it gets to the point to where if it feels like I'm gonna escalate yeah. dealing with you, then that's it. Because I, I love what I do, I love to be here. And if I dread talking to you or cutting your hair, then there's there's, there's no reason for me to keep doing it because it's yeah, not, that's too much. Static, it's not comfortable yeah, yeah. for me. It's not comfortable for me cutting your hair. It's not comfortable for you me cutting your hair. So yeah, you might think about doing something to that person's hair. No, I never do that. <laughs> no, because <laughs> you're, you're, you're a professional. I'm, you know, exactly. you, you right. yeah, but I'm just messing with you. Well, no, I, that's my. That's another thing I was thinking about though, because I mean, you want to offer him that, but. Would you want to offer them, you know, you could go to like, say like AJ. It's like, you know, you could try them, you know, if you didn't like me. Or would you just be like, well, I just can't service you anymore. That's that's a good point. You also, good. I would also offer people in the shop, before they go to a different barbershop, if it's just like a quality thing, right. then you, I would first recommend people in the shop just to keep the money flowing because you want to look out for everybody else. But that's, that's a good point. Yeah, before, but then also, you know, like say if I... Take them to AJ, and they they AJ already knows how the client is. I mean, I you know, want them. Yeah, but <laughs> some people might be like, oh, he got an attitude. Be like, man, I just need to go somewhere else. Well, that's why you need to talk to them too, because yeah, yeah. AJ might be okay listening to his mouth because he tips twenty. You know, he, he tips fifteen dollars, but you might Facts. be the money might mean nothing to you at that yeah. point. Nah, man, and, and, it, it, no amount of money is the worst. Listen, listen on his mouth like that. You know, I have a bad vibe in your shop. Yeah, right. it, it's not. It's not because you all your barbers is on that certain vibe of when somebody walks in, hello, how you doing? And then see them through the glass of the door. Like, oh, man, here come this dude. Oh, fast. <laughs> oh, God. You'd be like, oh, God, here come this dude. <laughs> we got to deal with this. Then everybody always then you, Mike, I am Craig is everybody's going to love Tense up because we don't know what this person's going through. Well, you got should, people running well, to the bathroom like, well, nah, I ain't going to do it. <laughs> you well, you know should, what I'm saying? Well, you should never let someone else dictate your emotion to the point where they have you walking on eggshells. That's not fair to yourself. That's not fair to the people you work with. If it gets to that point, yeah, unfortunately,
that person needs to go somewhere else to patronize another barbershop. Recommend another barbershop around the corner. <laughs> so, so does that okay if it gets to the point if that point is it if is it something that you should have a conversation with the shop owner about first before you cut somebody off just so is that is that oh, something you should go go forward to to the, the business owner? Of course, I that's, think that's, that's something. I think good, that's something that that's yeah, idea. that you can bring forward to the manager or the person who owns the business, so it can help you sell the dispute even better. Because a lot of times when you sell a dispute one on one, it's your word against their word. Mm -hmm. If you bring someone in to have to mediate the conversation, at least to help out, so it won't be you saying something, or they saying something, that it will be record that okay i've heard am i was really concise with this guy and apologetic and he gave his all and gave his best and now this guy right here he wasn't having it and so you he, have someone else to back you up but yeah. if you it's just you and him then it's just your word against his word yeah i'm sorry craig real quick what's the line um market street media market street media. yes it's on facebook okay. Yeah. Some people were asking, you know. Yeah, tell Market Street Media on Facebook, and if they have any questions, send it to Lathan, and he'll hit us up, and we'll answer the question as best as we can. What about dealing with a, a, a fellow coworker? <laughs> is there is there a different process with that than it would be yeah, for be. for I mean, it, clients? It, well, it is, it is, and it's not because with a fellow coworker, <clears throat> you don't want to have no disputes on the floor. Force. in school or in the shop so that, that's something that you can pull to the side as well use the same tactics drop your tone um hey let's go have a let's go have lunch and talk about our, our expectations what we expect of each other and what's the problem it just takes both people being adults yeah right to handle it that's yes. and that, but but you like you say it says that it seems easy or it, simple but it sometimes does. it's not and that's why we have in this podcast so we can offer some insight and some offer some advice, some solutions to some of these things that, that, that are happening. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people understand, once you interrupt your reputation, interrupt your income coming in, and the vibe around you, that's, 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 that's heavy. Mm -hmm. that is and, and, and plus, if you, I mean, if you're like me, anything I do in life with my hands or truck driving, welding on the cutting hair you're going to pour your all into your client mm -hmm. and it, it hurts me just even talking about the something that had to come to that level of me telling my client or a client not to come back or have to have that um grown man conversation with when that, that's I, I just want to have fun and cut your hair and vibe with you. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we're talking. I mean, when you, you, you when know, you lose that feeling, which it'll probably happen. No. If you cut long enough, it'll probably happen. When you lose that feeling, you know, just try to, I mean, what do you want to keep making yourself miserable to deal with somebody? Or do you want to go ahead and handle it and, 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 you know, take that stress out of your life, you know? And some people, some people can't handle conversations. Some people will let that eat them up until maybe they even, they get so tired of it. They quit cutting hair. You know? Yeah, the tough conversations have to happen. Yeah, but when those conversations happen, you have to maintain your level head. You can't go into the conversation being disrespectful and being taking the uh, taking the overs and expecting the other person who you have that problem with to understand. Mm -hmm. You have to be concise. You have to come in level head. You have to come in, and again. I think sarcasm is some things that needs to be out of the scenario when you try to handle disputes. Most definitely. Because if you come with sarcasm, a lot of times sarcasm is just the... <laughs> it's interpreted different by different people. It is. And some people take it as the truth. Do you really mean that or are you really being plain? Yeah, right. especially when they're upset. Yeah, especially when they're upset. You, you, you're you so on point with that, especially when they're upset. So <clears throat> I think it's important to always lower your, lower your tone. I agree. I think it's always important to pull that person to the side. Yeah, I, I agree with you, man. I agree with you. Oh, it's, <laughs> go ahead. It ain't always easy as well. I mean, no, it's not. Especially if you care about the person, like, like me and you. Like, I, I love Craig. Craig is like a brother to me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'll do anything for this dude. You know, but he, you know, I, I, that conversation, man. Like me and him. Like I can never see myself getting mad at him. Not necessarily mad, but 
not be able to talk about our situation, what we got going on, or what's going on, you know? But and that, I, got, I got friends like that. But and I got, everybody's not like that. You know what I'm saying? You're going to run into some people, especially clients, that you have to be able to be like, hey, I understand. And, and, and the barbershop is my sanctuary. And I feel like, you know, because it's my business, it's how I feed my family. And I have friends that so I, I won't make appointments for because why? Because they, they take me for granted. They won't show up to their appointments. So they got to catch me on a walk in. Right. Because this is where I eat. It's how I feed my family. And as, and as much as I care about our friendship, I'm not going to let it ruin what I've built for myself and yeah, my you family. You can't let it jeopardize. Exactly. Preach. Exactly. And if you, if, and, and, and thankfully, I got friends that are understanding and not willing to burn that bridge. But sometimes, you know, you got you to gotta make decisions. You got a few of them. You got to make those hard decisions. And you know? it's important to be a great listener as well. But your time is your time is valuable. That's good, Emma. You, you know, you can't let your friends dictate your business. Yeah. You know, you know, like you say, where I eat and feed my family, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I, that's that's good. It's important. It's important. And sometimes when, sometimes when people like that, like you said, like that, when you, when your friends see you growing, they just want to throw salt and just cause havoc. You know what I'm saying? And and, and like I said, your your time, like Craig said, your time's important. You want to <clears throat> you want to focus in on, on your on your time. And and every hour, you know, we don't. Work, I don't. I try not to think. I work by the hour, but so that's how it ends up being sometimes. Right. Yeah, I, I think this this. And what we're talking about, it, it, it just doesn't really apply just to barbers. It's life. Or school. It's, it's just life overall. Mm-hmm. It's just life overall. And a lot of the principles that we have talked about on the podcast, it, deals, it goes back to life. Especially when, mm-hmm. on the job, any job. Any job. And how you raised. I'm I'm telling you like it is how you raise goes a long way (laughs) for real but but then again you have to be an active listener well yeah you you have to go into situations because if you go into a situation where it's just your word against his and nobody's listening no one is getting a point across you're right but in that situation what you just said Craig is like I feel like that if I had to take it to you as the manager and the shop owner i would always take the low road like look craig this is what happened i'll take the low road well you're taking the high road huh you're taking the high road well i'm talking i'm I'm just saying do whatever you got to do to make that customer happy but i'm just saying i'll take the i'll take the heat you know what i'm saying because but if you know your barber like you know you know you you like nah i don't see this happening in my in your head well the thing is right what i've always learned you should never apologize for something that you didn't do wrong well, you I mean, you're right yeah. about that, but that, that's, there's, there's that, difference between taking the high road you, you and could, apologizing when you, you know, but if you, if you don't, if you didn't do something wrong, you, you shouldn't apologize if you didn't do something wrong. There's it, ways to take that, you know, but don't sit there and be apologetic to someone. You, you, you can listen and off, but don't never say I was wrong. My fault. You, you, it's, it's ways to handle certain situations. There's people out here scheming to get free haircuts. And that's right. happened plenty of times. And I've seen right. it happen. So, you know, and it's real. It's wow. a real thing. So you can be like, hey, man, I, I can't. I'm sorry you feel this way. But, hey, this one's on me. Right. Yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. If you come back, you come back. If you don't. No you get the way. If you come back and I do, and I cut your hair the, no. the same way and you still got something to say, it's just, it's not going. Or if it happens like every other time, it's like one minute you're happy, the next minute yeah. you're not. It's like, you know, you know what? your limit. Everybody has yeah. their limit. Everybody's limitations are different. Everybody's, you know, your limits. One. From so from my experience, let, 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 yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. How many clients have you had over the years, from you having two barber chairs to you having four and five barber chairs? How many clients have you had to tell them not to come back or try a different barber? I, 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 it's, it's it's minimum because again, the key for me is my communication, and I tell everybody, you're not going to beat me in communication. You're not going to beat me in people to people personable skills. You can, you might be able to cut hair better than me, but you're not going to beat me in that. And that's what has kept my reputation with my clients solid for years. It comes down to communication, how personal with your clients, how you meet them from the door to your chair, how you remember their first name and their last name and their middle name and their birthdays and their kids' names and their dog names. And their family members' names. I remember when they went on vacation last year, the year before. Those things that that that's solid to people. And then 
if you don't know that person, be, but be able to talk about something, having a common ground with them. If you meet someone from Australia, know that the Olympic game was in Sydney one year. So you can talk about that. You know, because that's going to make them happy that you know mm -hmm. something about their country. And I had that conversation with Miss Dale sitting in class, and I was thinking, I was honestly thinking about a situation. I'm like, what happens if I want to fight if a, if a student? Like something happens and they, they want to have an altercation with me. And I hit that realization, just look, watching Miss Dale teaches, you actually have to genuinely care about yeah. the people. And if yeah. you don't, and if you genuinely care about the people, then any situation that happens, you'll be able to handle it the right way. Yeah. And that, and right. I, and after watching, them watching Miss Dell teach and just seeing like how she actually, when somebody asked her a question, she actually listened to the question. And no matter how crazy or, or, or wild the question was, she cared about what the student had to say. Active listening. Exactly. Active listening. I agree. And finding some common ground knowledge. And so, so that's why I come in and say sarcasm sometimes is just best to leave it out. I mean, if it gets to that point where you can't talk to that person, I can understand that completely. Well, you know, but it'd be like this. You know, it got to that point. But hold on a second. Let me back up. I'm going to go get someone to help you to solve this problem. Uh, and you that know, can help. You know, but remove it, them it, from it, that situation because you don't want an yeah. angry client in front of other clients. You don't want an angry client in front of other customers, right? Other staff members, right? Remove them from the situation as best as possible. Because what we all know, some people like an audience, and when they have an audience, they, they feel get more, hype. They get you feel more brave <laughs> mm -hmm. for real. Somebody in the back's always like, "Yeah, tell." <laughs> Not times out here. Somebody like, "Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bet you won't do that." Talk <laughs> about don't, something like, <laughs> "Don't gas on the fire." Exactly. <laughs> You know what I mean? And it's unfortunate, but there are some people who go to protest and they sit in the back and they throw stones and you never see them. Yo, they're the first ones leaving. Yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, they're gone. It's like, man, that was me. Did you see that rock? I threw that. I threw that right there. <laughs> no, they wouldn't even do that. They, they wouldn't even do that. <laughs> I'm talking about after they got home and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. After everything even went down, I they at that. home watch the TV say, yeah, I started that. I started that right there. <laughs> Check that out. So, <laughs> you can't um, see me, but I started that. <laughs> so, so listening to what we just, what we just talking about, how, how important do you think it is for people to understand triggers and how to defuse situation? Well, you know, you, Craig, your eyebrows starts twitching. <laughs> 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 right. Active listening. I'm just dead. See, you're saying, "Hey, listen." Active listening. Hey, listen. No, no, listen. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's 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 your reputation's on the line. It's at I the mean, end of the day, one bad one bad in, in, in apple, one bad apple can just ruin everything. No, a bad comment, a bad conversation, a bad. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's not. It's, it's a time and place for everything. Mm -hmm. Right, but don't don't try to just sit there and just talk over them. Sit there and listen to what they're saying. Let them finish what they're saying. And then comment because maybe it's just they want somebody to listen to them that's for sure. Active listening. So I mean, that's just how I see the situation. Yeah, and re reducing the situation, try to minimize it so it could even fade away. Facts. Sometimes it's just better not to say anything. Right. It's like let but, it get let them get it off their chest. Right. Because like I just said, like you told me, a barber wears many hats. Right. Many. And, then, and, and 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 like you just said too, Craig. Just let them listen. Let, maybe they got a bad day at work and they just want to vent to you. And then you and always they, and not, you know it's not necessarily you try to solve a problem for them, but let them vent it to you. You know. So we we have a question. Um, do we have a name for the question for the person? From Courtney. Oh my God. Um, Courtney <laughs> asks, "How do you handle angry clients in the school versus the shop?" I think it's the same exact way. It says no different. The school is your shop. Yeah. That is your shop. That is your bit. You you are responsible for the reputation of the school, just like you're responsible for the reputation of the shop. Yes, you're practicing to be your own boss. You're practicing for the work field. So the how you practice in school is how you're going to practice, how you're going to play in the shop. So it's important to follow those same rules and regulations to help you get to where you need to be in the shop. Because Everything from just from experience, everything that happens in school, I've seen it happen in the shop. Everything, like, like your coach always told you, it's like you know, they always say practice makes perfect. It's like, no, nah, my coach always taught me practice makes permanent. 
I mean, it, it does. It does. And you have to respect that because, and I tell a lot of students, hey, if you have a situation with a client, there's ways to handle it. Let's talk about it. Let's, we understand the problem. Now, here's some solutions to handle it because it's going to happen again in the shop. And the only, difference, the only difference I would say between the school and the shop would be that when you're in the shop, it's, it's heavily your reputation. You're more than just the student at the barber school. You're, you're so-and-so. So it's right. your, na your name is, is on it. And some of the things that happen, some of the things that happen in the, in the shop and in the school are so, so, so similar. But the things in the school that how that kind of helps the shop, that differentiates, we have all services are performed by student barbers. That's one of the main difference. And that's kind of like an insurance policy for the students. And people still come in disgruntled. Well, you know? I mean, I've I've seen it happen in the school where I go in Bristol. But Miss Dale, shout out to Miss Dale, by the way. She's the true MVP of Bristol. School of the of the bar of the of, of the school in Bristol, Crown Cuts Academy, Bristol. That's right. What do you say? <laughs> She's the true MVP. The she is MVP. She handles her. All you gotta do is watch her. That's because Miss Dale she, goes here. When everybody's here, she's always here. Yeah. And she have you crying, apologizing to her. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, all and, those and, years and, of experience. And, and, I've watched her work. She's wonderful. And, and, and I've, I've heard her on the phone with people, you know, people that ain't happy with their perms, this and that. It's okay, honey. You come back in, you come see me. We'll take, and we, care, of we'll it. take care of it. You know, and, and you just see that. So if you want to know what to do, just all you got to do is open your eyes up and, and watch. Give some shout outs. Oh. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Tasha. You know, my sister, Candace, probably my cousin, Keisha. You know, but shout out to everybody, even Courtney. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know who Courtney is, but Courtney's it's probably, 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 it's probably my wife. Well, this <laughs> yeah. It's probably my wife. Shout out to my sisters and my cousins. Shout out to uh, my homeboy, you know, OG, you know, Rodney. <laughs> The question G4 How do I change barbers in the same shop? Ooh. I don't understand. I don't understand the question in particular. How do I change barbers? I think what they're saying is that if you're not happy with the barber that you currently have in the shop and feel like you're happier with a different barber, how would you politely go about switching barbers in okay, the same shop? No, no hard feelings, you know what I'm saying? That's tough though. <laughs> That's I, tough though. I, I mean, I mean, for real, we're all adults at the end of the day, right? You need to, you need to talk. To the barber i would say i wouldn't just jump chairs i would i would try to talk to the barber because you're going to leave them with that that feeling of, of what, what have i done what exactly happened, yeah so the key is have a conversation again exactly. and, and it's the same way you don't have a conversation in front of everyone you put them to the side in the office maybe at for lunch or something a conversation but those are real life situations that happens all the time for sure and you have to find out the core of the problem now if there's a problem is something that's gonna hurt the shop then you, you have to have a serious conversation but I think um, how you go about things, everybody go about things differently. I tend to kind of want to give everybody extra, extra chance, extra chance. But I think um, it's something that you have to sit down and talk to the person about and come to the core of the problem. We have another question coming up. One thing you want your students to take away when they graduate. Who's who, who, who sitting there? <laughs> uh, Candace. Candace. My sister. <laughs> One thing I want my students to take away is, is, is be of high character and have plenty of values and understand the first day that they walk into a barbershop, they have to treat it like, like it's theirs. Treat it like they own the shop. Right. I want them to go into the shop, treat that first day like their last, and their last like their first, and make it their everything. That's my favorite quote of all time, and that's in the Jay-Z's lyrics. My so you still somebody else's sayings. Oh, right. man. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> it is, man. <laughs> that's right, that guy. So, yeah, that's it. so, so, you, still is, so you still have somebody else's words now. Yeah. Huh? We're going to have to cite people on the <laughs> podcast. I, I did. I did. You did, did say Jay-Z. Yeah, and I've said it several times, yeah. so everybody knows it. <laughs> he, think, he, he claimed the Allstate one, though. How does he do that? He didn't cite yeah, that. Yeah. I told you, me and Allstate got an understanding, <laughs> man. Yeah, I, I want them to leave with plenty values and, you know, and 
just plenty self worth. Understand that this industry is a great industry. You have to love it and give your all to it. Don't play with it. Right. And I was just thinking about that one question. It's like, you know, changing barbers. Maybe it's not even changing, man, in a hurry. And you're you just started on the client and they need to get out of there. Right. You right. Know, just ask and be like, is there something, you know, I did wrong? You know, after they're done with their cut. Right. You know, and it could have been something. Oh, simple. so so it's a different that, how do I change barbers in the shop? So if you're not happy with your haircut, how do you go to another barber? But um, it ain't necessarily it can even be that they mean, wasn't happy. If it's not even that. Sometimes you go into a shop, you see someone cutting better than the other barber, and just simply politely, you know, hey, I have a conversation. Yeah. Hey, go to your barber as a hey, I'd like to try am I out. That simple. Or even just, or even give your, if you want to give your barber another chance to say, hey, yeah. will you cut my hair kind of like he did? What's his name? Right. But some people, it, and, and a lot of times it's the, it's the vibe that the barber gives off if he's not friendly. It's not even a lot of times to cut because if you have a client, after a while they come for more than just a cut. Exactly. They come for the conversation. They come for the laughter, the, the laughter, the vibe. Yep. They come. They come for someone to listen to to them. They come to see me, baby. <laughs> they come to relax. They come to relax. You know, get away. Yeah. They come to see the tank top and AJ's gun. That's it. Yeah. This guy right here. Hey, don't, be, hey, comes out. Courtney. Courtney. don't be ha- don't be hate just because I'm losing weight. You Courtney, not Courtney, this okay? Guy right here. Sun's don't out, be guns happy. Out. Sun's out, guns out. That's right. <laughs> don't be ha- don't be happy. Uh, you gonna block the moon. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in the school for, and the one thing that I think that I that that I seen like when I when I talk to people, the one thing that I want them to know is that, like, the people get when they first get there get so insecure their work and about right. how they carry themselves. But like, I feel like if you just be yourself, then trust the process. Exactly. Then it, it, eventually your haircut's gonna be where they want to be. The clientele that you want's gonna mm-hmm. be there. The environment that you want's gonna be there. Yes. You gotta plant the seed, baby. Trust That's the right. process because the people who are there for you. The staff, the instructors, they've been there. Craig. Understand that that we're gonna put you in the right position because we love our jobs. At least at both my schools. All my instructors are invested. They love what they do. Um, I love what I do. So I I, I can almost guarantee you by the time you leave school, you, you will be able to cut hair. I haven't seen one of my students yet leave school and not be able to perform like they want to perform in the shop. And be just as hungry Amen. the day you came in yeah. when you leave. Amen. Yes. Stay hungry. Yep. Make your first like your last. And make your last like your first. And make that your everything. Your first day you walk into the school should be like the last day you walk into the school. As hungry as you are then your first day, you want to be a, that master barber. When you leave, you should want to be a master barber even more. Yeah. And make that last day like you came in. And then make that your everything, and you'll be okay. Just trust the process. Yeah, don't lose that energy. Don't lose that energy. Streamline, focus. Never that. Yeah. And stay, stay around positive people, of positive course. vibe. That negativity ain't gonna get you anywhere. No, get your mentor, get your people in the industry who's doing well, and then set your sights on something different. Whether it be um, an instructor, uh, whether it may be a shop owner, whether it may be one day. Um, owning two shops, owning a school, whatever, whatever it may be. Because one thing I also tell my students, when they leave Crown Cousins, they part of the family for life. You part of this fraternity oh, so for life. you cook a dinner tonight? There oh, you go, man. man. You see what I'm saying? Courtney, please <laughs> cook for that man, please. <laughs> Courtney, pick him up. Somebody come get him. Courtney, put some steak in the blender. <laughs> so you can... <laughs> <laughs> You so know I ain't strong. Uh, you know some, better than that, Craig. Two raw eggs. You know. <laughs> some kale, I ain't some Rocky. Kale. Almond milk. I ain't Rocky. <laughs> you look like I'm Rocky or something. Two eggs. Hey, hey, drink that on the go. <laughs> Please. That's why I love the podcast. You get a little bit of laugh at a time. So, um, I mean, it's, it's, we, we've been there for an hour. You, you don't seem like it. No. Nah. So, so. You got first time. Am I going this time? My code. What do you think? What, what, what was your feeling before you come on the podcast? What was I feeling? I was feeling good, man. I, I couldn't wait. I was hyped. <laughs> was hyped. You know, I'm hyped. I'm always hyped to try out new things, though. You know, always. always. I'm, 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 I'm hyped. I got the same energy. Mike knows I got the same energy All time. in school <laughs> as I right now. And you should know. <laughs> you should know. Because- like, like, I'm just taking it all in. Hold on, 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 hold on,
Tell me you didn't like it when I was about to walk through the door because you knew you was in for a laugh. <laughs> Come on, I mean, be honest, Craig. Was that it, or was you the one everybody was like, oh man? <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. No. I'm capping. I'm capping. Oh, I'm capping. I'm capping. Hey, I'm... Please, please, can you do shots fired? That's why. <laughs> hey, look. That's why you can't do sarcasm. That's why you can't do sarcasm. He just gives haircut and he start licking his fingers and his eyebrows. And... <laughs> Hey, and so like, hey, he might not be the best pencil in the box or some, some <laughs> shit. <laughs> he might be something crazy. I'm like, man. I'm like, hey, but no, but no, at the end of the day, you made me feel that way, right? Y'all. And, you know, and, for, and, and, and for real, and for real, you made, and that's the thing of a barber, you make that person feel that way. And, and that's what we talk about because when you make that person feel that way uh-huh. through the consultation, the vibe, a lot of disputes are less likely to happen, exactly. Exactly. It's less likely to happen. So through the consultation, the constant interaction and, and feeling that person vibe, sometimes some people not, might not want to talk, but that's that rarely happens. But that, that breaks the ice right there, that, that consultation. Yes. Uh-huh. That's the first thing that breaks the ice. As soon as they sit down, you know, after you done greeted them and everything, you start with the consultation and you sitting there having a conversation with them, you know, that just breaks the ice. Don't sit, don't let them just sit there and not say nothing. You just looking over their head, you know. So so true story. Last week, um, a student was asking me, I'm Craig, I was talking to this guy, I was cutting his hair, and I could not get through to him. How did you get through to him? I was like, I just came up simple questions. Um, what's your name? How are you doing? Where are you from? And I think the guy said he was from Nigeria. So I was like, what part of Nigeria? Abuja or Lagos? And he lit up. So the point I said to say this: find a common ground with a client. Mm-hmm. Find a common ground, and once you find a common ground, attack it. Find a common ground that you have with that client, something that you know that they know, and attack it. He was from Nigeria. I know Nigeria, the country. You ever been there? No, but I know a lot about. I the know, country. but you have you been to Africa though? Not yet. Oh. But I read and I study a lot, so there's not too much information I don't know. Because when you're a barber, I think it's important to know is try to get as much information as possible. Something a little bit about everything. A little bit about everything. Renaissance man. A little That's bit me. about everything. You know what I mean? And just just having a conversation with him about the fly eagles. That's because you know soccer is the most popular sport in the world. So just letting them know I know a little bit about the flying eagles, which is um, the World Cup national team. It lit him up. Mm-hmm. And right. the student could not get through to the guy, but just try to find a common ground. I There's mean, questions could, you can ask. That, that 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 type of individual, you could ask about the food, anything like that. But not just ask about it. Find something that you and them have a common ground on. Right. It might be history, it might be chemistry, it might be um, watches. You know, if, just try to find a common ground because typically everyone are just like two degrees of separation. We all are just two degrees from separation find a common ground and i said to say this go out there and inquire find information for yourself as a barber i think every barber should read as much as they can grab information on a worldly scale not just on a local national but on a worldly scale because when you start grabbing information like that you're going to meet so many clients from around the world around the country that you could have something common with. Because mm-hmm. that helps break the ice. That helps solve disputes. That helps level the vibe. It helps dilute so many situations. So what did you, what'd you learn from this podcast today, Mike? Uh, just really try to handle situations, you know, with difficult people. You know? Right. And that y'all were just absolutely silly, so... <laughs> But I, I did like the information, the input everybody put in on it. You right. Know, you can always learn something every day, and especially in the barbershop. What what'd you get from this today, um, AJ? Well, you know, I got from today is that never go up to the client's voice. If your voice is way, way, way down low, monotone, and they see that, you know, it might make them calm down a lot more, you know. So I learned that. But I also learned a long time ago that if 
the levels go up, the listings go down. They're, they're not going to be, nobody's going to be able to listen. Both people are yelling. They're not going to listen or retain each other's information as well if that if they was on a common facts, level. Facts. Level. People, both of y'all yelling, man. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? You can't hear anything. You, you can't, can't hear out anything. anything. You're not going to be able to retain the information like Craig is giving to me or me giving to Craig. And if it goes that far, forget yelling. If that person gets mad, they really ain't listening. Right. Thanks. So, I'm, I, you know, I learned that to keep my voice down low, you know. And, and and strive on that, and that's what I'm gonna try to do. You know, keep. But I do going. like what Craig said about that. It's like <clears throat> speak to the point where, like, maybe they didn't even hear what you said, and that'll bring the tone down real quick. It's like, I don't know what. What did you say? You know, just bringing it down to that level where they had to bring down their tone of voice just so they could actually hear what you said, and you went and you didn't even say anything confrontational. You were just trying to bring it down. And you know, that could really resolve a situation real quick too. Yes. What you get? Out, what you get from the Am I active listening? If you start from that, from the from the very beginning, from the first time you consultate with the very first client, and until you know, until you're done cutting the hair, if you do that consistently, then a lot of times you'll avoid uh, uh, the problems that you're dealing with to begin with. But then sometimes, you know, those days that you do have those problems that continue, you need to make a decision that that is is this person's money worth my my com my comfort inside and in where i work or where i learn at so. of course you have to be true to yourself you exactly. have to be true to your establishment you have to be true to your coworkers. you have to be true to your clients yep yep so i'm glad he learned active listening because he don't be listening he goes that's sarcasm again. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm at, I just, I <laughs> so uh, as you, you know good. all good things got to come to end and all everybody who's been in the podcast has to come back again I Dude. think we're oh, almost uh, deaf. Most deaf. <laughs> Number do that. Yeah, like this. We have season yeah. one, two, and three. You you know that I'm gonna be the most uh, requested person to come back <laughs> to the podcast. You know, but do we give shout outs at the end? Yeah, give your shout outs. Oh, go ahead, Mike. I'll get Mike first. Oh, are you I calling like, a piece of paper? I like out? to shout out to my sisters, especially. <laughs> you know, I really appreciate that. Appreciate the questions and everything else. Shout out to my daughter. You know, Michaela. You know, and everybody that's listening. And I sent you know the invitation to. For people to listen to and tell shout out what, to you and you man i really and, appreciate and tell you. people where they can find you what you do oh and you can what, find find me at crick uh crown cuts in bristol and five commonwealth avenue yeah you know the address i don't know the address <laughs> but you can always google it oh yeah. oh yeah yeah man shout out to everybody man <laughs> shout out my man uh g4 man you know <laughs> you told me to shout you out about my sister love y'all man i really appreciate everybody yep and go ahead AJ. My first shout out is going to my homie Craig <laughs> Charles, boy. He hey, look, this dude right here has got a big heart. He loves people and he loves his craft. That's my first shout. -out. My next shout out is and he loves money. <laughs> <laughs> my next shout out is going, paid, to, Craig. going to my wife, Courtney. I love you, baby. All my kids. Baby, thank you for supporting me. Also, go check me out on my Instagram at Heavenly Clips7. That is heavily clips seven. <laughs> Check me out. Yes, sir. You want any last things you want to say on mine? You know, the, the you, car you... is official. I don't know if I can follow that up. That, <laughs> car, is, that car is official. Yeah, I, I appreciate I'm happy. that, man. I'm happy to be here with y'all, man. I like talking to y'all. I'm glad y'all made it. I'm glad y'all made it. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Barber College Success brought to you by Craig Charles of Crown Cuts Academy, JC and Crown Cuts Academy, Bristol. Come check us out where enrolling students every month at both locations we have um check out our instagram check out our facebook page we do accept financial aid fafsa and Pell grants um and we do have flexible payment plans in-house payments um if you'd like hit us up at 423-461-0004 check us out on instagram facebook again um come see us think about changing the career I think it's important for people to understand this barbering industry. It's a great, it's great, it's a great thing. It's love. Not only a career, but check out the cuts. Check out the cuts. I went check to a, a barber show this weekend and they had this battle. I thought it was so great. It was a Nas battle. All the haircuts were cuts. And they played all his whole album, his whole catalog for like an hour and a half straight. Oh. 
That was amazing. Yeah, that, that's nice right That's there. deep. Yeah, but again. So they had the Wiz Kid and all playing that and all that? I mean, it was nice. It was, it was. I, I think everyone needs to go to a hair show, a bar show, whenever they get a chance to and participate if you're a student. That's going to set you apart. That's going to put you in the next level. Again, Barber College Success. Brought to you by myself, Craig Charles, and my co-host, Mr. Am I the Man? Will I Am? Um, we're going to come up with another hot episode next week again. Come check us out. Spread and love the JC way. The only way Kron Cuts know how to do it. Peace.